This is a Friday Shoes production. This is lesson 9-6 in our books on page 495. Our target today is I can graph linear equations using the slope and y-intercept. And those will be given to us when we have, a, have an equation in slope-intercept form. And slope-intercept form of an equation is just a, a, a way an equation is written so that when you look right at it, you can see what the slope of the line is going to be and what where that line crosses the y-axis. Remember now, we're talking about linear equations which generate lines on graphs. And these lines, we can actually find the slope and the y-intercept by just looking at the equation and then graph them quickly. And that's our end goal here. All right, so let's take a look at what it says here. Proportional linear functions can be written in the form y equals kx. We've done that before where k is the constant of variation. We actually found out that that was the slope of the line. Then also non-proportional linear functions, which those are the ones that will graph that won't go through the origin, 0, 0. Those can be written in the form y equals mx plus b. There it is right there. That is called slope-intercept form. y equals mx plus b. So we'll have y equals m will be a number. x will be there plus another number, b. So m is our slope. Y, b is our y-intercept. What is the y-intercept? It says the y-intercept of a line is the y-coordinate of the point where the line crosses the y-axis. Remember, these are lines now that we're generating through these equations, and this line that we're going to generate will cross over the y-axis somewhere. That's the horizontal axis, the y-axis. So where it crosses, that number will be the y-coordinate of that point. Now, of course, the best is to see this in action. So what I'd like you to do in this red box, I'd like you to copy down the slope-intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b. And remember now that m is going to be your slope, and the b is going to be where the line will cross the y-axis. We call it the y-intercept. All right, well, step one is being able to recognize if a, an equation is written in slope-intercept form so that you can pull the data out of it. So here it says, state the slope and the y-intercept of the graph of each equation. First off, look at number one. Is that in slope-intercept form? Y equals 2 thirds x minus 4. Well, we do have a number in front of the x. That's great. But notice it's minus 4 and it's not plus 4. In my little red box there, you can see that's what the slope-intercept form looks like. Y equals mx plus b. So there's a simple modification that we have to do to these equations to make sure they're written in slope-intercept form. In this case, all we have to do is change that subtract 4 to an add negative 4, which we've done before. Now we have slope-intercept form. We have m, which is in front of the x, and we have a plus b, which is negative 4. So let's take those out. Slope is going to be 2 thirds, that's m, and b is going to be negative 4, that's the y-intercept. So we would state it like this in a sentence. The slope of the graph is going to be 2 thirds, the line is going to have a 2 thirds slope, and the y-intercept, where it crosses the y-axis, is going to be at negative 4. And again, we will graph these later on in this lesson. All right, let's look at number two. Is that in slope-intercept form? X plus Y equals six. Not even close. You can see it in the red box, Y equals MX plus B. This doesn't even look like it. So what do we have to do to get it to look like Y equals MX plus B? We have to solve for Y, which means we have to get Y by itself. And you notice there's that X over on the same side. Well, let's get rid of it. So what do we do? All right, we write down the equation, and then we subtract the X from that side. When you do that, of course, you have to do the same thing to the opposite side. So we have 6 minus x on the right side. Now we have y equals 6 minus x. Is that slope-intercept form? No, not quite. So now what we're going to do is we're going to, we have to switch these around. You can see that the x comes first in slope-intercept form. And then we have the y, which is that, or y-intercept, which is that b. So how do we do that? Well, we can't just uh, switch subtraction because it's not commutative. So we have to change this to an addition problem. So watch what I do here. And I'll do this in, let's see here, blue. Instead of having minus x, let's do add negative 1x. We're going to put a 1 there in front of that x. So now when you switch it, notice that's what they're going to do. They're literally just going to switch these around. And now we have negative 1x plus 6. You can even see here, it says write the equation in the form y equals mx plus b. Recall that negative x really means negative 1x. That's why I put it in there. And now we have slope-intercept form. m is going to be negative 1, b is going to be 6. Well, how do we say that? The slope of the line, the graph that's made, is going to be one, negative 1. And the y-intercept where it crosses the y-axis is going to be 6. 
All right, you give it a shot on these three. Pause the video, come on back, see how you did. All right, state the slope and y-intercept of the graph of each equation. Not a problem. Let's take a look. That first one, a, y equals negative 5x plus 3. Is that in slope-intercept form? It sure is. So real simply, all we have to do is name the slope, which is negative 5. That's the, what's in front of the x. And it only works when it's in slope-intercept form. So just because you found something in front of an x doesn't mean it's a slope. It has to be in this form. And then the b is going to be the 3, since this was this was an easy one because it was already written in slope-intercept form. y equals mx plus b. So we would say the slope is negative 5 and the y-intercept is 3. How about b here? y equals 1 fourth x minus 6. It looks pretty close, but it's not quite because we don't have plus, plus number. We have minus 6. So we have to switch that minus 6 to a plus negative 6. Now we have slope-intercept form. Slope is going to be 1 fourth. That's in front of the x. And, of course, the b is negative 6. So we would say that the slope is 1 fourth and the y-intercept is negative 6. All right, how about c here? y minus x equals 5. That doesn't look anything close to being y equals mx plus b. So what do we do? Well, we got to add x to both sides because we have a minus x. Let's add x. That will get rid of the x on the left side, and we'll put it over on the right side. So now we have y equals 5 plus x. Or if you switch that around because we want to, we have y equals x plus 5. Now we're just missing something in front of the x. Anytime there's something missing in front of a, num or a letter, there's always a 1 there that you can put. So y equals 1x plus 5 is our, our, our example we want to use to find our slope and our y-intercept. So let's do that. That is slope is equal to 1, and our y-intercept is going to be 5. And that's how we would state it. All right. How about example 3? Graph using slope-intercept form. This is what we're, all this practice is to get us to do. So we can actually pull the slope and the y-intercept and then be able to graph these equations quickly. We used to use tables. You have to plug in a bunch of numbers, and then you generate some points. You put the points on there, and then you have to graph. Well, guess what? This is easier. Watch this. Graph y equals negative 3 halves x minus 1 using the slope and y-intercept. Well, first off, is that in slope-intercept form? No, it really isn't. It's close. So all we have to do is change it to a plus negative 1, and now we have slope-intercept form. The slope is negative 3 over 2, and the y-intercept is negative 1. With those two pieces of information, we can graph this line very fast. No table required. Step 2. Take your y-intercept, because that's where it's going to cross the y-axis, and graph a point there. You know the line's crossing there. Graph the point. So graph it at negative 1. You can see the blue dot has been graphed at negative 1. That's your y-intercept. Now, a line's going to pass through there. Well, there's lots of lines that pass through there. Well, which one are we looking for? We're looking for the one that has a slope of negative 3 over 2. They tell you if you have a negative, make sure that you put the negative on top of your fraction. Remember, the fraction tells us what to do. The top number is your rise or fall number, and the bottom is how many you're gonna, units you're going to move to the right. As long as you put the negative on top, you will always be moving to the right. So now from this point, this blue point here, we're going to use it to locate a second point on the line by using our map of the slope. So our slope says we need to go down three, that's our top number, and then to the right two units. And notice what I've done on the graph. I'm going down three from the blue dot, not from the origin, from the blue dot, and then over two. And I've placed a green dot there. So there's our second dot. Now you can continue from that green dot, go down 3 and over 2 again, down 3 and over 2 again, and generate a bunch of points if you like. But you really only need two points. And the last step is just draw the line. So that is the line that represents y equals negative 3 halves x minus 1. All right. You give it a shot. Here's our last, last example. We have three equations. See if you can graph them. I'm going to graph them in red, green, and purple. So let's look at D here. Yeah, of course, you need to have some graph paper to try this. It says y equals x plus 3. Is that in slope-intercept form? Pretty close. We still need to have a 1 in front of that x. But I can see once we put that 1 in front of the x, we have a slope of 1. And then we have a b, which is 3. So y equals mx plus b. m is 1, 3 is b. Now, when we go to graph it, 
we need to graph our y-intercept first. So I'm going to take a red dot here. You see the red dot? And I'm going to start the origin. I'm going to graph the slope inter or the y-intercept, which is 3. 1, 2, 3. So there. There's our 3. Now from there, I'm going to graph another red dot. And I'm going to go up 1 using our slope. Remember, I changed 1 into 1 over 1s because I know I have the top. I have to go up 1 and then over 1. And there it is. So there's our slope generating another point. Now you can keep doing that. I'm, I'm going to do it just for the fun here. We'll go up one over one and then grab another one, go up one over one from that dot. These are all going to be on this line that's generated and all I have to do is draw the line. Now I actually have already drawn the line for us here so I'm just going to put it right here. So there's the line that goes through that point and it represents or those points and it represents y equals x plus three. All right, let's do the green one. Is that in slope intercept form? Pretty close. Pretty close. The one thing I got to remember is we have to have a plus b. So we have plus negative 1. So our b is going to be negative 1. Our slope is going to be 1 half. Pretty simple. Let's take this green dot. Let's go to negative 1 and put a dot because that's where our, our line is going to cross the y-axis. It's, it's our slope intercept form. Now, m it is one half. Our slope is one half. So from the green dot, this green dot here, I have to go up one and then over two. Again, the slope is kind of like a map. It tells us what to do. We go up one and over two, and there we are again. Now I could keep doing that, but I really don't need to. So I'm actually going to use that, and there's our line. That line represents y equals one half x plus negative one. How about the purple one? Well, that is in slope intercept form already, except I'm going to put the negative on top with the 4. So I'm going to put a dot at 2, because in purple, that's what it says to do. That's where it's going to cross the y-axis. That's what that means. And then the slope from that, that purple dot, I'm going to go down 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Remember, negative 4 means going down, and then over 3. So there we are. And all I need to do is connect those dots. And I will do that right here. And I can see that I'm a little bit off on this one, so I might have to change it a little bit, which is pretty simple. I'll just turn it. And you can kind of get the gist there. And now I have graphed all three of those right there. Remember, you can always rewatch this video or do the examples in the book or, of course, watch some of the personal tutor videos online on the online textbook. And this has been a Friday Shoes production.